a new box of bits here and although the components probably originate from China as is typical for this channel well this one has come via Canada now a bit of a fake second opening here because it was a delivery note with my personal details on uh, so I've not got this far yet here are the uh, well wrapped and packaged components ah nice right okay so there's a baggie here with all the various bits inside nicely packaged a little project box here which uh, oh has items in as well so uh, we've got a node mcu um, esp8266 uh, development board there a um, RS4852 serial adapter. You've seen some of those on this channel before. A few other ancillary components. Um, what's in here? Uh, there we go. An RJ45 connector and a circuit board, which is nicely attached inside this project board and yes this was bought from snacktech.com now as i mentioned you'll have definitely seen this module before the rs4852 serial module and we've seen it in this which uh, was a little collaboration here between uh, colin hickey who did the vast majority of the work and then me who just helped design the PCB which these three components sit on. It's the same RS4852 serial module, a uh, voltage regulator there based around the uh, AMS1117 uh, and uh, the ESP01 um, module. And using the ESP Link uh, open source software, uh, this acts as a Wi Fi serial COM port effectively that you uh, can connect to your EP Ever or EP Solar um, charge controller and then you can interrogate the information uh, in various software including the official EP Ever software. So, uh, yeah, we've definitely seen this before and effectively. This uh, here from Snack Tech is, uh, is the same sort of idea with an extra couple of niceties with the diodes there on the board. A nice uh, RJ45 connector, which actually Colin is now uh, doing on his version of the PCB. Uh, but this version is a little bit more self-contained and we'll, uh, we'll look at that a bit later on. But first, I need to build it. So uh, I definitely need these four screws out because uh, it's going to be difficult to solder without getting the PCB out of this box. So there we have the PCB out of the uh, project box there. And uh, yeah, it seems like a nicely printed PCB, double-sided, of course, uh, with the silk screen on the top showing the outline of the various different components. And it seems to be well labeled and that sort of thing now up here at the top left uh, well there is a space here for a micro SD card um, holder and uh, unfortunately uh, Jonathan the guy behind uh, snacktech.com uh, didn't have stock of those so uh, he sent it anyway and that is to follow but that doesn't bother me uh, for this video yeah so I need to start building this up and putting, well, soldering everything in. So, uh, well, without further ado, let's start. Now, the two main modules here are through hole, as is the RJ45 uh, connector here, and in fact, the LEDs, but the uh, resistors for those LEDs and this capacitor up here, C1, which is presumably a decoupling capacitor for the. Uh, SD card um, are surface mount and they look pretty small at least 0805 if not a little bit smaller and they are provided here three resistors and one capacitor so I will uh, well get those soldered on right so first things first I'm just going to tin one side of the resistor pads 
a small amount of solder. And then I think I take this back. I think these are smaller than 0805. They're really small for me. I've not soldered anything that small for a while. The good thing is that components that small, I'm not going to worry too much that they're all the same way round. I want the black side up, but I'm not too worried about being able to read the value, I'll be honest. And with one side soldered, I'll just touch a bit of solder on the other side and hopefully they'll be good to go. Now although I'm waiting for the SD card holder to turn up, I'll put this capacitor on because I'm definitely going to lose it otherwise. So there were no instructions provided uh, in the box, but, and there might be actually on the website, perhaps I should check, but I don't think I need it yet. This side here I think should be the anode, uh, because this track seems to go up this side through this pad. That is clearly labelled as ground, uh, so it should be that way round. And from memory, uh, it should be red orange green i'm pretty sure that's how it was like an upside down traffic light well i guess it depends if it's upside down i think really it might actually be mounted that way and the silt screens the other way up but uh yeah well that will then looks like a traffic light doesn't it red amber green so there we have the leds soldered in just cut these legs off. There we go. Hold on to them so they don't fly around the shed and end up shorting a battery. Now, earlier I said that the two main modules were through hole, but I was incorrect because although I did have some pin header here ready, um, if we place this module on the main board here, we can see that. The uh, serial side, well, those holes line up quite nicely. Can we see that? Yeah, we can. Uh, but on this side, actually, those pads don't quite line up uh, with the holes on, uh, on the actual module here. So luckily, or by design, I would imagine, these have like almost gold fingers on the end here. And uh, so you can surface mount this component to this PCB so uh, well that's what I'm gonna do so first things first I'll put a reasonable amount of solder there on the ground connection on the serial side of this module and solder that on so that's now soldered in one position and uh, yeah, I might just need to move that over a little bit. Yeah, let's bend that over. I can reflow that solder on the ground on that side in a minute. I think I will just solder that there. Yeah, that looks okay. I think that's all lining up. I can go ahead now and solder these interestingly spaced pads I'm sure it was by design and with the other three soldered i can just reflow that ground over there and add a bit more solder and hopefully they're all connected nicely well checking under the microscope i think those joints are okay it's a little bit odd there isn't it there's some flux residue there isn't there uh, with those pads being sort of misaligned, but they're aligned well enough, I think. And let's just check the uh, the top ones as well. Yeah, they all look good to me. I think they'll be fine. The RJ45 connector next, and uh, hopefully with these plastic plugs, that will hold it in. Yes, it does, and it's perfectly flat and flush. Yep, that'll be easy to solder.
The next thing to solder, jumper 2 and jumper 3. Interestingly, jumper 1 is the RJ45 port, but 2 and 3 here are uh, just these jumpers here, and uh, these pads don't connect to anything on the top of this uh, PCB, uh, but do connect here to the uh, RX and the TX on the serial side, and actually connect those through to the uh, node MCU here. So... Clearly, uh, Jonathan has designed here that you can disconnect the communication, uh, the RS-485 communication, for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why you might do that, but I will need those jumpers in to make sure this works for me. So there's just a node MCU uh, to put in now, and uh, yeah, that just should flop in there. 3 volts up there, D0 down there, that means it must go in that way. Now I'm interested to see if the design of the case allows for you to put that on headers. Yes, I think it does. Let's check, because I'd like to be able to remove that if needs be. Now I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but this is how I do it. I uh, connect the socket to the actual thing to make sure I'm pulling out the right pin, uh, the one beyond the end, remove that, and then I should just be able to nibble away at this and break the plastic on either side until the point where it usually goes flying off or I get bored and decide to snap it and then tidy that up a little bit and then I end up with the right amount of pin header socket. Right well with the pin header connected to the node MCU let's plug that into the PCB. Quite a lot taller isn't it? Let's see if it will fit in the project box. Now it is worth mentioning that you do have to cut a hole in the project box lid for the RJ45 connector if you want to put the lid on uh, but yeah that's not going to fit is it that is not going to fit like that I mean it's difficult to tell with the RJ45 but yeah that's definitely protruding out of the top isn't it so uh, I think the uh, node MCU is best just soldered straight to the PCB yeah I think I'll do that so now I have the opposite issue. These pins go quite a long way through the PCB, don't they? But uh, I think those standoffs in the black case there are probably long enough. And yes, they are. That moves around without any sort of horrible scratching noises. So uh, yeah, that should be fine. I'll solder that in. Now, while I solder these last few pins, it's probably worth mentioning that you can buy a fully assembled version of this kit. I chose to get the kit because I like putting these things together, but if that's not your thing, well, you can pay for it to be assembled for you. And in fact, you can just buy the PCB if you'd rather do that and you've got these components lying around in your shed or whatever else people do these sorts of projects in. So that's the hardware pretty much done, apart from that micro SD card holder there, which is still in the post, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't need it to run the code on the Node MCU. Now, while we're talking about software, well, why does this device need to exist? Why wasn't either the official EP ever eBox Wi-Fi uh, adapter sufficient, or in fact... The one that Colin made and I uh, created the PCB for. Why does this need to exist when these two already exist? Well, the micro SD card gives you one clue. Neither of these items save any data. You need another device, usually a computer, a Raspberry Pi, something like that, uh, to save the information that it gets through these devices. These are simply converters, serial to uh, RS-485, both Collins and the official one. The difference with this product is it's all self-contained. 
it can save the data onto this micro SD card, but it also runs its own web page and can show the information directly from the Node MCU. So in the next video about this device, I'm going to put the software on here and we'll look at that web interface and see how useful it is. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.